Yeah, piece of cake. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no question. It's, uh, you know, we, we, we knew kind of what who the teams were going to be playing before they, they announced. We just didn't know when. And, um, yeah, it's, it's going to be a challenging schedule. But, you know, as I go back last year, it was another challenge as we started that season as well. You know, the thing about it is you never know uh, what the teams have or going to have coming back, you know, what, you know, what their chemistry may be and all those things. And so the approach ne never changes, though. You're going to take the same approach in the off season and work as hard as you can possibly work. And then, um, you know, get ready one game at a time. You know, our first game. Now, the difference this year is the fact you're, you know, you're playing a conference game right off the bat, uh, well, a couple actually, and uh, against a team we know is going to be really talented. They got a lot of guys, um, talented players, and they were injured a lot last year. So it'll be a challenging first game. And so you got to be ready to play right off the bat because, you know, those games really count right off the start when you just look at conference opponents. Coach, do you, do you like playing conference? I mean, it doesn't matter to me, really. I think it's all in how you approach the, the schedule. Um, you know, all that means is that that game really, really means something. You know, to play a team on our side of the conference um, right off the bat on a Thursday night, so you better be ready to go. You know, uh, it doesn't matter if you're playing a Notre Dame or NC State. I mean, they're, they're all big. We all know that. Um, you know, but it, uh, hopefully the, you know, you'll have a better sense of urgency, uh, heightened awareness as you're leading up to that first game. Speaking of sense of urgency, I mean, last year you were just getting ready to start practice. Yeah. Running. When you look back on that and how much it helped the team, you ever thought about the alternative? Had you waited longer? What kind of success you all might have had? Well, you know, we kind of taken that same same approach for years, and so that's kind of just been our, our approach for the all season of how we're doing it. This year, we're pushing it back a little bit. For us, it's about recruiting. You know, so so last this is the first year where. February is a dead period, so we cannot bring recruits on in February. So the reason why we pushed it back this year uh, to that we start at the end of February, we go through all of March, so we can utilize the month of March to get recruits on campus and to watch us practice. So I think that's probably the biggest thing for us. Um, you know, so it's it's all in how you do your off season anyway. Everybody's got that certain period of time where they're they're doing their they're lifting, they're running, competition drills. Everybody's got their spring ball, you know, then they're recruiting and all that. But I think you know the way we do it, we got a good formula that we think is successful for us. And, um, you know, this, this spring will be no different. How much do you think you'll be able to install this spring, you know, just yeah. having had a year under Yeah, you know, it, it'll be, you know, obviously better for us this spring. You know, that last year, you just probably starting from scratch. You know, this year we're able to build off. We just got finished playing not too long ago, so we're able to build right off of that, the things that we were doing at that point in time. You still really scale it back and focus on fundamentals, um, really base offense, defense, kicking game. But... Um, I think this spring we'll be able to enhance that. Our second half, as you look at the last probably seven or eight practices, we'll be able to you know, put a few more things in that I think will help our team as, as you start thinking about the teams we have to play next fall and trying to introduce more formations, more, more things that we'll see in the fall that I think will help our team overall. Um, you know, and particularly uh, you know, as, you, as you face your offense and defense uh, every day at practice to try to help each other um, to help you as you head into the fall camp of August. You mentioned recruiting. You got a bunch of kids on campus today. How have things uh, transitioned or changed for you guys since you first got here? Yeah. Trying to get in the doors of some of these kids yeah. now after this season. Well, I mean, a year ago today, I mean, it's way different. You know, as you, look, as you think about last year, we only signed, what, four in December last year. We signed 25 this year in December. Um, so, you know, we're essentially full. We have just a, just a few more left uh, for this year. So we're in a great shape as far as that goes. But then, as you look back last year, we had 21 guys committed before we played our first game last year off a team that didn't win a conference game. So we're in a much better – place now you know having won eight games won a big bowl game for us uh five wins in acc so you know the guys we got coming on campus now we're not selling a dream we're not selling this is what's going to happen we're selling here's what happened you know here's what we were able to do this year you guys come in and help us build off of that so we're in a much better place now i feel like the um the quality of the student athlete that we we should be able to get in on this year is going to be a higher uh talent character all the things that we're looking for uh, you know, so I, I think we're in a much better place, and we're excited. You know, over 50 guys here today that are, you know, 2021, 20, 2022 guys, um, you know, and their families. And, they, you know, so now it's just easier to sell it, you know, because it, it's, it's right there. We get to show it and see it, and it's tangible, and it's not something that we're, we're saying is going to happen because it happened. Coach, is there any specific position you feel like from the 2020 season you'd like to address, maybe a grad transfer, anything along those lines? You know, as, as, as we had before, before the game, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, like I said, we have about three left, and so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna look and see, uh, 
you know, last year we brought six grad transfers in. Um, this year, you know, potentially we're looking at maybe one spot for that. Uh, you know, offensive tackle is a need. Um, you know, you know, Kyle Beckman's, you know, a guy who, who just came out as a junior who's going to be, you know, a high draft pick. So, you know, try to fill a void there up front and tackle. I think we feel pretty good about the inside guys, but. Um, you know, I think for us, linebacker, inside linebacker, offensive tackle are two spots that that we still need to address. You went and found Coach Nicholson. What did you like about him, and yeah. why did you want to come here? Yeah, I mean, uh, first of all, you know, a lot of good recommendations. You know, I, obviously, I, for me, I, I'm not looking for X and O guys. I'm looking for character. I'm looking for guys that are going to fit within our staff. Um, you know, he's very energetic, very outgoing. Um, is known as a great recruiter. Um, he's been he's been at, you know at a place where he's worked for the same head coach, um, and he's been elevated throughout his tenure there. I mean, so it, that means they respect him, and um, you know I think uh, you know he knows his conference, having played at Florida State. Uh, he knows the kind of player that we need to try to get to, to compete for championships. Um, you know, I think for all those reasons, I think he was just a great fit for us and our staff. Um, he's in you know ironically he was here in 2014, you know as a, a young coach, and so. Um, I, I just think for all those reasons, I think he's a great fit for us. Um, I think he's an up-and-comer, um, kind of a guy that will rise in this profession. And, uh, and um, you know, we're very excited to get him here. Uh, this is, you know, it's only been, what, three or four days on the job now. How many of the guys you signed have started this semester? How many we, well, there, there's a couple more that are going to be coming in February. Um, but I think right now we got 14 guys. So, which is tremendous. You know, you signed 25 and 14 are here in January. Um, what's, there's a couple of things that's awesome about that. Um, the first thing is, as a freshman, you think, I think about it as a dad, you know, when I want to send my kid, you know, in January, that's the middle of the semester, that's tough, you know. But there's 14 of them, so they're all together. You know, they're, they're kind of in their own group. You know, they're going to class together, they're, they're working out together, eating together. So yeah, they're, they're very similar because they're, they're facing the same things right now. And, you know, a lot of they're walking around, they're like big eyed and they're trying to figure everything out right now. But tremendous to have them here. They're, they're work, going through workouts. They'll be able to go through spring practice. They'll get a leg up. We'll be able to utilize these guys in the fall. So a lot of these, these guys will play for us um, as we head throughout the, the season. So um, we're excited about it. That's the most guys I've ever been a part of having in January. And um, it seems like this is a little bit of a trend now for these guys that are graduating early. You know, we're excited about this class we signed. Um, the average GPA of this class was above a 3.0 coming in. So, we're, you know, we're not only signing good football players, but guys that were academics are important to them. We want to sign that. That's what we're targeting because we feel like those guys can learn your scheme so much faster. Um, you know, and it, it just speaks to the volume of their character because, you know, school is important to them. And so, um, yeah, we're excited about that. And, and these guys have hit the ground running. They've done a great job so far. They, you know, these guys are gaining weight already. They're, they're getting stronger already within the first two weeks. Coach, when you go on the Yeah, it's been awesome. You know, the last week and a half that I've been out, uh, we got one more week of recruiting. And, you know, from, you know, not only the high school coaches and, and you know, what we're seeing within the schools, but really when you when you bump into another colleague, you know, from other, another college, you know, these guys are very, you know, because coaches know, you know, these coaches know, and they're very respectful for what we were able to accomplish last year. Um, and, man, just, you know, it just very appreciative of, of all that because it just shows what our staff, what, what they're made of. Uh, what our players are made of, what they're able to accomplish, that nobody gave us a chance to win a, you know, really in, in close to that. And, um, you know, so, so that, that's been great. And so now when you go into these high schools, um, you, again, it's the same thing. You're not selling a dream. You know, you're, you're actually, you got something tangible. You know, we won eight games. We won a bowl game. Um, you finished second on your side. We beat the team that won the other side in the ACC. I mean, so all these things you're able to talk about. And so it just piques the interest of these recruits so much more. And so now that's why we're able to get over 50 up here for this, for this day. Um, you know, this, this big day for us. So um, that part of it's been awesome and outstanding and looking forward to getting back out again this week. What did you learn about yourself as a coach going against teams like Clemson and moving out to the ACC? Yeah. Well, you know, I, I've said this for many, many years that, that it's, it's only 11 guys out there. You know, so many, so many people try to complicate things. There's 11 football players and you just got to get your guys playing at a high level. Um, I think for us, it just shows we belong. You know what we we're able to do. I think um, you know we competed at the highest level and, and competed competed very well. Uh, a lot of things we did this year were we hit milestones. You know, you know, winning a first conference game in a, in a while that was awesome. Beat Boston College and then going on the road and beating a, a ranked team like Wake Forest. Um, you know, 
you know, hanging tough with Clemson for a half, you know, and Notre Dame for a little bit. I mean, you know, I just think that all those things give us a little bit of confidence. And I think that you take all that and you, and you put that in, the, in this off season right now. So now we're working for a purpose. And these guys are working to compete for the for this championship. And that's what we that's what we're striving to do. We got a long ways to go. We're not, we're nowhere near there yet. Um, but we're, we we know that we can see it. You know, we can see where we need to get to. And, and so that's encouraging. That, that's exciting, you know, to wake up every day to, to know that you're coming in and working for that, that opportunity. When you go from a, selling a dream to a tangible success, are there certain kinds of players who respond or who start to respond who would, that would have ignored you last year? Yeah, I think so. I, I think a lot of it has to do with, uh, with confidence. You know, it's just gaining a little bit of confidence. And, and that's for any of us. I think it doesn't matter what profession you're in. You know, if, if you're you're doing your job and then all of a sudden, okay, you're doing something else pretty good. It's like you guys, you write a pretty good article and everybody's like, man, that's a pretty good article. That just gives you a little bit of confidence to go out and write the next one. You know, it's the same thing as football. You know, these guys get a little bit of confidence. And, and for example, like a Marshawn Ford, who last year this time was just a guy. And I, we put him on the leadership council last spring, and he's probably wondering why did y'all put me on the leadership council? You know, because he didn't have he didn't have much confidence. He's just a freshman. Well, after the season he had, phenomenal year. Now he's back on that leadership council again. This all season, man, he is way different place. You know, he's thinking, man, okay, now I'm I'm a leader now. Let me try to lead lead this team, and because he's got a little bit of confidence. And he's just one example. There's many of the guys. I mean, you can just look at Cunningham. The way he progressed throughout the season, from the from the early in the year to where he was at the bowl game, for example, um, a tremendous uh, scale upward of playing at a high level, and and all that is is confidence, um, knowledge about what we're trying to do. All those things go hand in hand. What about from a recruiting standpoint? Yeah, there, there are doors that, that are opening players with either a higher profile mm -hmm. or or with, with alternatives that. Yeah. No, you, you're exactly right. I mean, and that, that's, that was really hard last spring and, fall, and summer to, to recruit these guys when you hadn't won an ACC game, you know, and all we could do was say what we had done at App State. You know, they don't want to hear that. You know, they want to hear, well, what have you done at this level? And so now we can go show them that. And so now, yeah, there's no question. So now these guys, these guys, these recruits are smart. They do their research. You know, they're asking around. They're, they're all right, how's Coach Sat? You know, tell me a little bit about him from other people. And, that, you know, and so – all the things that, that we're trying to do, it, it all helps us. And so we're able to talk to a, you know, a higher profile guy, a guy who's getting recruited by some of the best schools in the country. And we're right there with them and we're talking to them. Will we get them? You know, that remains to be seen, but I think we'll get our share. I think we'll get the kind of the kind of players that we'll all be proud of to come into this program. And for us, we're still looking for fit. Like as a player, we're still, I don't care if they've got, you know, 75 offers, you know, they may only have five offers, but if they fit exactly what we need, then that's what we're going to go after and, and, and the right kind of player because I, those guys can produce. You know, a lot of these guys, some of these guys, Marshawn Ford had to walk on. Well, he, he led ACC in touchdown catches. So there's some guys out there that can play that maybe don't have a lot of offers. So they're still looking for the top ones. Yeah. 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 It's huge for us. Like I, I, I call those guys the glue. They're, they're like the glue of your program. So we had a big walk on day last Monday, and um, you know a lot of these guys are, are coming. They're coming to play for us, and a lot of these guys had offers. I mean, these guys had some scholarship offers to D two or Group of Five, and they're still choosing to come play for us because they know they're going to have an opportunity. You know, we've put six guys on scholarship last year that were that were walk on guys, and so and and a lot of them played, and so that hasn't changed. And so we want this program to be a place where. Maybe you didn't get recruited at the level you wanted to get recruited at, and you got an opportunity to come in here and play. And, and it's not it's not lip service. Again, these guys are getting opportunities, you know. So I encourage the guys to come walk on. And we we want we we want these guys to come walk on because they will have a chance to play, and they're the glue because they work their tails off. They they work with a chip on their shoulder every single day, and so you want that within your program. And that was one of the things that we did at App. That I thought was unbelievable. You know, because those guys, you know, maybe a really talented guy right here, if he sees this kid who's getting no money that's going to show up every day at 6 a.m. and does everything right, work his tail off, and what are you doing, right? And so I just think that, that goes hand in hand. It just helps your program. Ken, last one. Ken, what is this environment today? You mentioned all the free shots. Yeah. Today. What is this environment? How, how much does it help? Oh, man, we're selling it. Like, so out this whole week, you know, we're out talking to guys um, and coaches to say, listen, we get these recruits on campus, and, and we're going to see a basketball game at the Yum Center on Saturday. It's going to be phenomenal. Our basketball team is really, really good. You're going to love this atmosphere. This is just part of our athletic family. You know, come come look at it. Come be a part of this. And it all goes hand in hand. You know, and I think um, it should be a great game today. It'll be a great atmosphere. 
um, we get to hang out, met, you know, just hanging out with these guys. And so they just get to see the camaraderie that we have with them and, and we do with, uh, with our basketball team. You know, I think, uh, you know, all our teams here, man, I, that's one thing I didn't know when I got here of how good the rest of the athletic teams are here at the University of Louisville. It's phenomenal. You think about men's and women's basketball, what they're, what they're doing right now. You think about swimming. You think about baseball. Who's getting, you know, number one in the country coming up. I mean, so all these sports are phenomenal for, for me, and we're proud of that. We're proud to be a part of that. All right, thank you, guys.